Hello, and welcome to Nobody in the series of the First War, where we discuss everything entailing the First War, as well as a chronological list of battles and events that occurred during the conflict. So let's continue. Sometime later, Sir Anduin Lothar, the new young guardian Medivh, and Prince Lane, all of whom who were close friends, continued to go on their many adventures as they had when they were children. The trio dared to visit the wilds of various regions throughout the world and visit the most dangerous and remote places. The three of them often traveled together through the borders of the kingdom and put down a number of raiders and monsters, gaining a reputation for doing so. On one such expedition, the trio were camping south of the kingdom of Azeroth, deep within the jungles of Stranglethorn Vale. One particular night... Something happened, something that would change the young Medivh and the world forever. The three men sat together around a campfire on this night, laughing and joking as they entertained each other with various tales and stories. Lane was in the midst of telling a story, one involving a nicely apportioned young woman. Lothar found it to be particularly amusing, laughing loudly as Lane continued his story. Medivh also happened to favor Lane's story with an embarrassed smile. Prince Lane made a point motioning to the young Medivh, who shrugged, clearly embarrassed by the tale. Lane concluded his story, and Lothar nearly fell back and roared with laughter. Medivh suppressed a laugh himself into his curled hand, looking like he was merely clearing his throat. Lothar's laughter finally subsided, and Medivh said something, opening his palms upward to make a point. Lothar fell backward now, bursting with laughter, and Lane himself put his face in his hands, his body heaving in amusement. Whatever it was that Medivh said topped Lane's story entirely. Then something moved into the surrounding jungle. The three stopped their revelry at once. Having heard it, something malevolent was lurking at the borders of the campfire, hiding in the darkness and the brush. Lothar rose slowly and reached for a great, wide-bladed sword, sealed tightly in its sheath. Lane stood up, reaching behind to pull out a double-headed axe and motioned for Lothar to go one way and Medivh the other. Medivh had risen as well, and though his hands were empty and he had no weapon, he was definitely the most powerful out of the three. Lane, with his broad axe, locked forward to one side of the campsite, moving with speed and deliberation. He wanted whatever was hiding in the jungle to reveal itself and to hear his fast approaching footsteps. The thing happily obliged, bursting forth from the shadows of the jungle. It was massive in size, brutish, and towering over the humans, even though it was hunched over. It was a troll, one of the jungle breed its blue-hued skin pale in the moonlight, its long gray hair lacquered upright into a crest that ran from its forehead back to the nape of its neck, revealing its age and its scars. Its teeth, the shape of fangs, and rounded peg-like tusks protruded out from its lower jaw. Its ears and nose were elongated parodies of human flesh, it was dressed in skins and chains made of human finger bones that danced on its bare chest. The troll let out a battle cry, burying its teeth in its chest in hate and rage, and fainted with its spear. Lane swung at the outthrust weapon, but his blow went wide. Lothar charged from one side, and Medivh came up as well, arcane power and energy dancing around him in an elegant manner. The troll sidestepped Lothar's great sword and leapt back another few steps when Lane swiped at it with his huge axe. Each step covered more than a yard, and the two warriors pressed the troll each time it retreated. It used the spear more as a shield than a weapon, holding the haft two-handed and knocking aside the blow. Medivh realized the creature wasn't fighting to kill his friends, but was luring them away, and Medivh shouted at the others, hoping to warn them of an ambush, but it was too late, 
Two other trolls leapt from their hiding places on both sides of the combat. Lane was caught by surprise immediately, and a spear skewered his right arm. The broad axe blade bit into the earth as the future king screamed in pain. The other two concentrated on Lothar as he was the largest out of the three. Now he was the one being forced back. Using his broad blade, he foiled first one thrust, then the other. Still, the jungle trolls showed their strategy. They were driving the two warriors apart, separating Lane from Lothar and forcing Medivh to choose whom to assist. Medivh decided to assist Lane, seeing the prince wounded and unable to hold a weapon to defend himself any longer. Medivh charged his hands with the burning flame of arcane and elemental power, but was soon ambushed by yet another troll himself. The troll slammed its butt end of its spear in his face and followed with a slam of the heavy haft against Medivh's jaw. Then, turned with an elegant motion back to the prince and proceeded to pummel the wounded Lane. Medivh went down, and so did Lane, leaving Lothar to fight on his own. The troll hesitated for a moment, trying to determine who to kill first, but quickly decided on Medivh. The troll raised the spear, and the obsidian point glowed with an evil gleam in the moonlight. Seeing his end to be near, Medivh quickly forced out a series of sounds and syllables, and a small tornado of dust rose from the ground and flung itself into the troll's face, blinding it. The troll hesitated for a moment yet again and clawed at the dusty orbs with its free hand. The hesitation was all that Medivh needed, for he lunged forward at the creature, not with a spell, but with his own simple knife, plunging it into the back of the troll's thigh. The troll let out a scream in the night, stabbing blindly in the direction of the pain. The spear dug into where Medivh had been, for the young guardian had rolled to one side and was now rising from the ground, his fingertips crackling. He muttered a word, and lightning gathered in a ball between his fingers and raced forward. The lightning struck the troll, who jolted from the shock and burned from the electric currents. After the display of power and magic subsided, the troll hung for a moment, caught in a blue limed seizure. The creature fell to its knees, and even then it was not dead, nor finished with the fight. It quickly tried to rise to finish off the Guardian, its red eyes burning with hatred and indignation for him. The troll never got its chance, for a shadow rose behind it as Lane brought up his covered axe to meet the sky. The axe gleamed briefly in the moonlight before finally racing down hard on the troll's head cracking it open and bisecting it at its neck. The creature sprawled forward, and the two young men turned to the trolls, battling with Lothar. Lothar was barely holding his own, and had been pushed back almost to the end of the camp. The trolls had heard the death scream of their brother, and one continued to press his attack on Lothar as the other charged back to deal with the two humans who killed the other troll. The troll faced the other two and let out a massive roar that shook the humans to their bones as it crossed the campsite in a few strides. Lane charged in return, the two destined to meet in combat, but at the last moment he veered to one side, dancing aside the troll's spear. The troll took two more steps forward, which brought him up to the campfire itself and where Medivh was waiting. Now, the Guardian seemed to be full of energy and power, limed by the coals before him. He looked demonic in his demeanor. He had his arms wide, and he was chaining something harsh, cruel, and rhythmic. Under his command, the fire itself leapt up, taking a brief, animated form of a giant lion. And soon, under his command, the flames raced to the attacking troll. The jungle troll screamed as the coals, logs, and ash wrapped itself around him like a cloak and refused to be shrugged off. The troll flung itself onto the ground and rolled first one way, then the other, trying to dampen the flames. But it did no good. The magic from the spell refused to allow the flames and burning material to be put out and tightened around the troll, squeezing into its flesh. And finally... The troll stopped moving entirely, and the hungry flames continued to eat and consume its body. 
Lang charged on the remaining troll and buried his axe in its side. The beast let out a roar of pain, but its moment of hesitation was all that Lothar needed. The champion batted away the troll's spear with a backhanded blow, and then, with a level, precise swing, he cut the troll's head off, cleanly from its shoulders in one strong swoop. The head bounced into the brush and was lost. Lane, though bleeding from his own wound received, slapped Lothar on the back, checking him for any wounds while taunting him for taking so long with the fight. However, Lothar quickly put a hand to Lane's chest to quiet him and pointed at Medivh, concerned for the well-being of his friend. The young guardian was still standing over the fire, his hands held open, but his fingers were hooked like claws. His eyes were glassy in the surviving firelight, and his jaw was tightly clenched. As the two men ran over to him, the young guardian pitched backward, his eyes widening and his skin turning pale as a ghost. By the time the pair reached Medivh, he was breathing heavily, and his pupils were as wide as the full moon. Medivh's friends leaned over him. Then, the young Medivh's eyes rolled up in his head as he laid there still on the jungle floor. Lothar and Lane tried to revive their friend, but it was no use. Sargeras had reawakened within Medivh, and without the protection of the clerics or his father present, Medivh stood no chance against the dark titan and his will. Medivh fell once again into a coma, a coma that would last many more years and longer than his previous coma by a decade. Medivh lost a total of 20 years of his life due to his episodes and his comas. Uncertain of what to do, Lothar took Medivh back to the abbey in the kingdom and tended to him himself. Lothar was greatly troubled by Medivh's sacrifice, knowing it was thanks to him that they had survived their encounter and grew increasingly concerned with Medivh's condition. Lothar realized the abnormalities of Medivh's comas and the fact that his condition seemed worse than it was before. He began to fear for his friend's fate, fearing that his episodes would continue to repeat themselves and follow Medivh all of his life, each time the coma lasting longer than the previous one, until eventually he would never awaken. Sometime later, while Medivh was in his coma, on the orcish homeworld, Medivh under the possession of Sargeras, contacted the warlock Goldan once again, and this time visited several other warlocks as well. Medivh had previously visited Goldan several years before when he had first fallen into his coma, and now he was visiting him again, repeating his messages and his commands to the warlock. He was able to do this by traveling through the Twisting Nether and visited them all in their dreams haunting them and whispering commands and promises in their minds. Medivh showed them visions of his world, promised them great power, land to conquer, and an escape from the dying world of Draenor. Gul'dan and the Shadow Council, along with various other warlocks who were not yet a part of the Council, finally came together to discuss their visions. The Shadow Council decided to keep their visions a secret from the other clans and orcs in order to the assassination of all warlocks who would not submit to the will of their organization or to Gul'dan. Weeks passed by without any word from Medivh, and then suddenly the warlocks discovered something, something they never could imagine. A tear in the fabric of space itself. The rift and the magical ley line had been made. Hoping to find some way to utilize it and to discover its purpose as well as its origins, the warlocks began to investigate the rift, seeking any and all information regarding it. The chieftain of the Frostwolf clan, Duratan, continued to warn the orcs and the clans of the fault of their ways and the evil path of the warlocks, claiming that their race would be doomed if they continued to follow the demons, but unfortunately, his claims and his warnings continued to fall on deaf ears. This account can be found solely in the novel The Last Guardian by Jeff Grubb, and it is somewhat difficult to place within the Warcraft timeline, as originally six years passed after Lane received his Hourglass of Fate, 
and then the kingdom began to fall into a state of a crisis as the Orc invasion began during the same time period. It is believed that this event occurred after the initial awakening of Medivh and before the Orc invasion, but nothing is certain. Another issue is that it is unknown if Medivh's coma as a child and this event are related or not in any way or fashion. Since it was never specified if this event occurred when they were teenagers wandering through the kingdom or in their mid to late twenties. Thus, I believe this to be the most accurate assessment and probably happened in this time frame. Ultimately, Sargeras would use Medivh's body and mind in this period and time, and he used it to contact the orcs once again and to organize the warlocks together to construct the portal on their world to link it to the human world. Unfortunately for Lothar and Lane, their fears of Medivh would be the least of their worries, and Sargeras would take full control over him and lead the orcs into their world. Medivh would be but a fragment of his true self from this point on, fighting the dark titan within his own body and mind, fighting for possession of his body as well as his soul, and he wouldn't be stopped for several more years by the very friends that he tried to protect. And that's it for today. This concludes the expedition to Stranglethorn Vale and the Long Coma. Thank you for watching today's episode in this series. If you want to see more episodes and series, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to message me. Also, don't forget about our Facebook page that is up and running. The link to that is in the about box. Until next time, I will see you on the next episode.